Hey guys, I'm starting just a little bit early for those of you who are still watching Brad. Good job. I just want to make sure that everything is set up correctly since I keep having to move my camera so you can see everything. Um, today I didn't make it over to see Brad's broadcast. I didn't get everything set up fast enough. So if there was anything amazing over there for Brad's broadcast, make sure to comment. Um, for those of you who can't figure out how to be able to join in the discussion, make sure to go and add me in your G+, your Google+, uh, friends, and that kind of thing. And that way you'll get notifications when this comes up, and that's where you can do live chatting. Otherwise, you just have to watch, and I'm sorry about that. But I love it when you guys comment. It makes this so much more fun when there are questions. And today we have a really, really fun topic. So I did try to put the link to my G plus page in the description. Hopefully it showed up there. And um, I'm going to write a question. And anybody that can respond back just so that I know that the chat is working, that would be much appreciated. So Paige broke her foot. Actually, we're not sure if she broke her foot if she, or if she just sprained it. Um, but she's in a lot of pain. She was out gathering leaves and bushes for the goats, and um, she got a little bit exuberant, and she, she fell backwards and landed on her foot. And so uh, she's feeling some pain today, and today I'm spinning on the polywog. Again, I have a hard time sitting without doing something with my hands, and so... We'll see if we can do this. I might actually have to take Paige's yarn off. Um, she, Paige likes, and, and that's why Paige isn't here today. She can't spin because her foot's broken. Um, and so she likes to put like an acrylic core on her yarns. That's what she likes to do. And so those of you who get her yarns, you'll see that what it is is it's a soft, uh, sometimes a single ply, but sometimes it's a, it's a regular two ply kind of depends on her mood but it's been really fun to see her kind of experiment with things so i'm going to put her last creation on the nitty naughty so that she can decide what she's doing with it um let's see make sure to let me know i because at this point i'm not even sure if i'm public but i guess i have 47 viewers so somebody must be out there so today the topic that I wanted to talk about is what does freedom mean to you? And I was listening to a TED talk last week and what it was really about was about the, the package that we're sold as small children about what an ideal life is, what your ideal life should look like. And um, in this TED talk, what he said was that when their their daughter was born, is they really assessed their life and they said, so is the fact that we have a mortgage and we have all these toys and we have all this debt and all this these student loans, is this what we wanted or is this what we were told we wanted as children? And um, that really is something important to talk about. I, I have a lot of friends here on YouTube that the, one of the reasons they're on YouTube is that they're trying to find some way, the reason they're creators is that they're trying to find some way to pay off massive student loans or um, pay for a car that they purchased that, that was out of their budget, these kind of decisions. Um, and for those of you, go to my G Plus account and, and, and add me as a friend, and it, you should get an alert that we're live right now, and that way you can talk to me. I would love to talk to you guys. So. Um, and so, that was a nitty naughty, by the way. That's how you can tell your yardage in your hanks. Uh, it, this is a two yard hank. So, so what does freedom mean to you? Is it something that somebody told you meant just oppression from government? Or are there other things that we can be slaves to? In my personal opinion, Debt is slavery, and um, I know that 
the times in, in our life, especially in our married life, because before we got married, I'd never been in debt. My parents uh, owned their home outright and paid everything in cash. And so um, the, the idea of debt was really foreign to me when we got married. And, and during the times that we've had debt, it, it really felt like we were in control of our lives. Come on, guys. Any comments? Any questions? I Should I play with it a little bit and see if I can figure out how to get it to work? Okay, so what I'm doing right now, I'll see if I can turn down the camera. This is a polywog, and it's a child's or a small person or a hobby spinner's wheel. And um, the part that I'm putting in right now is called the accelerator. And I'm showing this to you because I've had some people that went and purchased some recently, and I want to make sure you know how to put it together. So the accelerator, what it does is it takes the band and it adds another band so that you have different uh, ratios. Um, and I'm trying to remember if I was supposed to do it a different way before I put this in. Um, anyway, so by and adding this accelerator on, you can spin finer yarns because you have higher ratios. No questions. Come on, guys. I need some questions. Okay, Helios, you should text me and tell me why nobody's able to get comments in here today. Um, okay, so there's that. And it always takes me a second to remember which one goes on which one. Yeah, so I need to put this one on first. And so this is the girl's wheel, but I also spin on it. And it's just, it's a cute little wheel. It's not for production spinning. Production spinning, you need something fast. And this is, this is a good hobby wheel. It's just not as fast as the other. So that's what it looks like. So I'm going to bring you back up. All right. So let's see. So the first thing I wanted to talk about while I'm waiting for everybody to come on, and we will get back to the topic of freedom, is that for those of you who are on my Patreon, who are part of my Patreon group, um, make sure to add me to G Plus so that I can invite you when we do our group Q&A on the last Saturday of the month. It will be at 10 o'clock Mountain Time. So those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it is a program that allows people to come on and support our channel. They get special content. They get uh, Q&As with me once a month. Um, certain levels get a private Q&A with me. They get to ask questions. Um, we have one level where over the course of the year, I am knitting you a sweater. Uh, let's see, I have one tier where I, and, and you can choose whether I make you a hat once a month or a sweater during the year. So that's kind of fun. That's what Patreon is. So those of you who are on my Patreon, please make sure that you're, you are, are on my G plus so that I can invite you when we do our Google Hangout. Okay. What else are we doing? Um, so back to the freedom, what does freedom mean? Um, I'm doing a podcast with a girl named Cinnamon and she is just an amazing smart girl and she is an organizer and a cleaner and I know that a lot of people don't think of clutter and belongings as like a slavery but as a housewife I have to say that the more the more stuff I have the more I don't want to be in my house the more I feel upset and frustrated with my kids and with my husband because um, I feel like some, I don't know moms out there, don't sometimes don't you just feel like you're buried in a mountain of stuff? Okay, so I need to open this up. Paige had it cranked down pretty tight. And so at least as a mom, I don't know if, if you dads feel the same way when you come home from work and that kind of thing. But don't you just ever feel like your stuff owns you instead of the other way around? If you're paying for um, if you're paying for storage sheds and you're you have a big house and it's kind of coming apart at the seams, it just doesn't seem like you can ever keep it clean. You're paying people to come in and clean your house for you because you don't have the time to get to it, and you're going to work and yet you still have credit cards that you're paying even though you you know you're making a lot of money where's all that money going 
And so for this podcast, it's going to be called Jills of All Trades. And I think the website is going to be Jills of All Trades podcast.com because there's a lot of Jills of All Trades out there. But what we have been talking about a lot lately has been freedom. And um, both of us early in our marriage have made mistakes where we've gone out and bought cars that we couldn't afford. And it took a few years to pay them off uh, for, for Mr. Dirt and I. It took a lot of years to pay things off. And we did get to the point where we were really debt-free. The only thing we uh, uh, owed anything on was our house, which is the point we're at right now. And um, I still find that sometimes I'm moving clutter from one space to another. And I find that rather than living my life doing purposeful things, instead I'm just moving clutter around. And... Um, because of that, something that I've always been attracted to ever since I was a little girl was to live in a tiny house. My mom read me Heidi when I was a little, a little fart, and um, I, I loved that. I already loved goats, and so the thought of living in a little house where all you did was get up in the morning and you had one bowl and one cup, and you went out and you milked your goats, and you brought the milk in, and <laughs> you had cheese, and you, and, and you just had this little meal that was easy to clean up, and it took you two minutes to get things set out in two minutes to clean things up because you didn't have a lot of non-essential objects just was so attractive to me because as a kid my parents were good parents they had us do chores I you know I was washing dishes when I was seven and um, I remember I wasn't tall enough to reach the sink so I had to wear my roller skates while I was washing dishes and um, but I remember how frustrated I was even as a child at the redundancy of the cleaning chores, the redundancy of huge loads of laundry that had to go to the laundry mat and had to be put back into a car and had to be taken back in the house and had to be put in closets and stuff and just the sheer quantity of stuff that I felt like I was trapped into these routines that didn't leave me any time to, to do a lot of playing, if that makes sense. And now I have other things that I want to play with, so to speak. I want to be able to go out and garden and, and do other things. And yet I find that I have mountains of laundry and I have, um, I have tools out in the garage that haven't been put up and, and maybe redundant tools out in the garage that haven't been put up, that kind of thing. Um, and I've got to figure out why I'm not seeing any comments because I know this would be such a good chat and yet I don't know. I'm so sorry that I'm unprofessional about this, guys. Honestly, I'm not doing it on purpose. Um, I'm going to switch over and use the hopper right now because I did have a question last week about plying, and I did want to and I did want to show that to you guys. So, so the hopper is really really fast. It's a very fast machine. While I'm over here, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to make it. Is it gonna work? <gasps> she can't see the questions. I don't know why it does this every time. Why does it do this every time? So now I can see it. Oh, darn it, she can't see the questions. Hi, Gina. Hi, Doug and Stacy. <laughs> yeah, freedom means independence. Um, we want our kids to grow mortgage free and eventually evolve. Have you spun cotton? I have, I don't like to spin cotton, at least not on a spinning wheel. For that, you kinda need a charka. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm having to do so much homework on this, guys. Um, my dad taught me if you're working just to pay bills, then you're in the wrong profession. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, tiny houses. Okay, so there we go. I think I found it. Um, so apparently I have to go over to the side and ask questions. It's really interesting how this works. But it is the easiest program I have found to date, and so it's what, it, what I'm sticking with until I have more time to do some more research. Okay, so what was I talking about with freedom? Oh, so Doug and Stacy are here. I'd really be interested um, to know Doug and Stacy's uh, thoughts on this because they live in this little cabin that I just drool over, and it's beautiful. And... Um, I remember when I first started watching Doug and Stacy. Um, sorry, Doug and Stacy is over at um, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. And I, I don't know. I've always been somebody that really I, I don't wear fancy clothes. 
and I love everything to be really utilitarian, but I do find, especially as a prepper, that I, I sometimes feel like I'm a bit of a hoarder because I worry about the future and about having enough, and I think that that is so detrimental to um, your psyche to always live in fear, and yet it's so nice not to have to pay for things that you don't have to. And so what do you guys think? Now I can see your chats, by the way. Um, okay, so I'm doing a Navajo ply, which is like a chain stitch on crocheting, but you're chaining um, your yarn. Can you guys see that? I'm kind of finger chaining. And so um, when you use mohair, it's really, really, really slick, and that's what just happened. Sometimes, unless you do a really tight, a really tight spin, mohair will separate. And I like to do it with a with a good strong core because of that. Um, what was the other thing I was saying about living in a small space? I don't remember. But I don't know. Clutter is the bane of my existence. I hate clutter. But I love to not be in debt. And so it's always nice to have things you need when you need them rather than having to spend money on them. Does that make sense? So I think it's a kind of a double-edged sword. The whole prepper thing is to free you up from debt and to keep your family secure. But it can be a form of slavery if you are enslaved to those tools and those products that you bought for your prepping if you don't use them. And so my take on that is that if I have something that I believe I need for prepping, I have to use it on almost a daily basis in order to be able to justify keeping it. And I, and that has just, because for one thing, my mom is very, very, very good at garage sailing. And when she finds something that she thinks that I need, she gets it and she brings it to my house and then I have to try and figure out how to store it or use it. Um, and so I, I think that that can be a bit of a weakness on the prepper side is to fill your home with clutter. Let's see. So the podcast with Cinnamon has been going really well. And I think we're almost up to the five podcasts that we need before we actually put it up on air. And so that will be really fun. But I've, I've been talking to so many people on YouTube lately, people who got into prepping and homesteading because they are so buried in consumer debt that they're seeing the slavery that, that this debt brings and wanting to free their family from it. And finding that to living prudently, it seems to be the best way to do that. Um, which I, I do agree with that. I, I do know that it's easy to sink money into homesteading too, though. Okay. So my opinion is, let's see, we love the downsizing move and constantly evaluate what comes in the house and what goes. See, and that, Doug, that is why I love your house is because it, it looks like a work of art. It doesn't look like just a box that you stuff things in. It looks like, um, it looks like it almost like an organic part of your lives rather than just a big extension of, of a shell. Um, so I think that adjusting your goals when you come into the homesteading, especially if it's for um, debt downsizing and that kind of thing, is that what John and I found was that as we started to meet our goals, it felt really, really good. But one of the ways that we bonded was through meeting these goals. And we found that as we met them, we kind of had to look around and find another way to bond. Um, originally we had kind of bonded over in fear, fear of the future, fear of what was happening with the economy. But then once we started to kind of take care of all that stuff and we had everything backed up the way we needed to, um, oh, there it went, let, it let go again. Yep. I love, love, love mohair, but it is very slick and it doesn't, it doesn't bind to itself. The way that wool does it, it doesn't have those like little little barbs on it that wool does. It it's more like hair and it's slick. Um, and so, what was I saying? Um, and so, adjusting your goals as you meet a goal it is why I like Dave Ramsey with the debt snowball. Is that you start on your small things and you get the small debts paid off, and then you move on to your bigger debts. 
And I think in life, in general, with that kind of thing, looking at your life and saying, okay, these were our goals five years ago. Are those still our goals? And kind of looking around, maybe you're prepping has alienated you from some, from, some, from some family members. And maybe now your priority needs to be rebuilding that relationship with family members um, and maybe not being so extreme about your prepping or preaching it so hard so that you can regain some of those bonds. Maybe it's that you have been prepping for a long time and you haven't come up for air and you haven't gone on a family vacation. Um, maybe you started out having tons and tons of animals and you find that they are a burden more than they are a blessing and learning to downsize there. I, I really feel like it's so important, especially, oh, and that, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. I forgot about that. So talking about this and about down, downsizing and, and your, your goals as a homesteader and a prepper. So this is my homesteading journal. And I started this when I first started homesteading because I couldn't remember from season to season what I had done the year before, what I had learned. And I, I'm such an experimental person that it was really hard to keep track of everything I was trying at the same time. And so I started to make homesteading journals. And without these homesteading journals, you don't progress from year to year because you can never remember that kind of thing. So what I did we'll see if the glare will be too bad, is that I made really, really cute little pages out of cardstock so they'd be tougher. And then I had blank paper behind them so I could write notes to myself. And then once a year at the end of, or once a year for each season, at the end of each season, I would go through and I would take everything off of the blank paper and I would write it and make it really cute on my cardstock as this is a rule, this is the big thing that I learned in this year. And um, it was really, really important that I did that. I have a section for what trees I planted in what year, what company I got them from. I kept all my receipts so that if something died, I could get a refund. And um, it saved my bacon. And I haven't used it for about a year because I've been focusing more on the YouTubing than I have on the homesteading to get that off. But for instance, this year I did the straw bell beds in the greenhouse and they've worked so good up to this point, but now suddenly it's starting to get hot and I cannot keep enough water in those straw bales to keep them alive. And where before I was doing hand watering and it wasn't a big deal, now all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm watering two hours a day and they're still not getting enough water. I need to set up a drip system. And so now I have something to go and research and I can decide, is it worth it setting up the drip system or do I want to keep experimenting and finding new alternatives. But if I don't write that down now, I won't remember it next year. And there, there's so many intricacies with homesteading and gardening. You, have, you wear so many hats and you have so many plates up in the air all at the same time that if you don't write it down, you won't remember in the time that you need to be able to remember to make it effective. Like for next year, would I set up at least uh, soaker hoses, if not drip lines? I don't like soaker hoses. I feel like they're inefficient. But the problem here is that until the end of May, it's difficult to set up something like a, a drip line because you're, you're, it's still freezing at night, and so you can have things burst. Um, and so by that time, I have abundant green growth in my greenhouse. And how do I get those drip lines in there between the plants now? It's those kinds of intricacies. Let's see. I can't tell. I had something pop up that made it so now I can't see everybody. I'm trying to grow in Las Vegas. I should make one too. Let's see. What what are you making, Gina? Let's see. I can't tell. Um, so anyway, from there, what else do I want to talk about? I had a whole list of things. Okay, so adjust your goals. So this time of year, I am adjusting goals every single day. The reason for that is that I don't deal with heat very well. And so I get up at different times of the year depending on what needs to be done and depending on the daylight. In the winter, I get up later because I don't want to go out in the extreme cold. I want to wait till the sun has come up and things have warmed up a little bit. In the summer, I get up at sunrise because I want to be up before the bugs. If the bugs are out, then the goats don't want to hold still when I'm milking them because they're being bit. And so if I can go out before the bugs are up in the morning, I can get all my milking done before I have the nasty bugs come out. And 
I have to be back in the house before 10 a.m. The reason for that is that a few years ago, the girls and I were working really, really hard in the middle of the summer, and we got sunstroke. And since then, we've been really, really, really sensitive to heat. And so I get heat stroke now very, very quickly. And and so my, my I've learned to be very fluid with the seasons as far as this is when I start to get up earlier. This is when I start to get up later. This is when I'm spending most of my time outside. And this is when I'm spending very little time outside. So in the spring, I spend all of my time outside working because the temperatures are good for me. In the fall, I spend all my time outside because the temperatures are good. I can be outside. And mostly I'm just prepping for summer when I can only be outside for about four hours early in the morning to do my work. Let's see. What? Let's see. I don't, let's, oh, I can't see it. Things are moving too fast. Sorry, guys. I didn't, some of those questions I missed. Um, and so what was the other thing? So for instance, right now, things, you just have to adjust your goals. What has happened is that Paige broke her foot and she was the one that was taking care of all the small animals, the rabbits and everything else. And she was my little errand runner and she broke her foot. And now I am having a very, very hard time. I did get sunstroke this week and ended up spending a lot of time sleeping because of it. And so what, what it's come down to is I have to find a way to hire somebody to come and help me while Paige's foot is healing. Just not for a lot of time. But um, we also have a woofer coming, which is super exciting. They're like traveling farm apprentices. And um, I'm really, really hoping that we can get a lot of woofers coming in because then I won't have to pay somebody to come in and help me with the things that I, because at this point, if I don't have, if I don't pay somebody to come in and help me right now, I'm going to have animals dying. And I, I have things like today, I didn't get the greenhouse watered. I just stupid. I watered extra heavy yesterday, but I didn't water today. And so there, it's really a lot of strain on the plants. And yet there's nothing I can do about it. I have a little girl in the house with a broken foot and I need to be able to take care of her and I need to be able to get meals done and I, I can't be out in the hot sun. And so the greenhouse is suffering. And so if you're starting homesteading or you're starting like a market garden and stuff like that, sometimes you do have to decide, are we really all in? Are we going to do this at all cost? I know we don't have the money to pay for help right now, but it's either that or everything for the whole summer is down the drain. And so that's why I strongly, strongly believe in automated systems. If you can afford them, if you can afford to buy them a little bit at a time, getting automated systems in place for the things that don't need you as badly is huge because it allows you to be more fluid in the way that you take care of things. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not going into Tommy's time really quick. Okay, good deal. Um, so let's see, what else was there? So we do have a woofer coming this week as long as she actually comes. She's supposed to be coming. And then I have a, a two woofers, I think, coming in October. And we have the RV set up for them because we were planning that we might have to live in it. We have it set up and ready for them, which is really exciting. And um, I cannot wait. I have so many just little things that I need help with. I went. I was able to go and buy hay for super, super, super cheap, cheaper than straw. And hay works so much better as a mulch because you it has nitrogen in it from the alfalfa. And I need to get that set out in the backyard. And I just I just haven't had time. Um, what else is there? Uh, okay. The next thing is is I kind of wanted to talk about what's going on with the Etsy store. For those of you who've purchased my Etsy stuff before, things like the notebooks and the, um, the aprons, when I first started out, I was taking fabric that I got from a secondhand store, things like sheets and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now that the Etsy store is doing really well, I'm going and investing in better fabric and better notebooks and trying to really up my game there because I really feel like I really was doing my best when we first started out with the Etsy store but because I was using secondhand supplies and doing everything manually I I really don't feel like the quality was as robust as I really want it to be um, and so some of the things that I'm working on really hard right now I went and bought some duck which is a very heavy not quite not quite um, 
canvas, but but it's not uh, calico. It's it's stronger. So I'm trying to design some harvesting aprons so that you can stand next to your work, like next to your tomato bush, and pick into your apron and then have like a little drawstring and a button that'll hook it up so that as you're walking back into the house, it's not all falling out the top. So I'm working on that. I don't know how that will go. And then also I have my homesteading notebooks that I'm working on that I, I the, the thing for me is that when I make something, I want to personalize it. And with the ones that I've made so far, I left them blank. I, I put my cardstock in and I, I sewed the pretty cover and everything. But I didn't want to personalize it because for me, the process of having the homestead journal is to personalize it yourself. If you like stickers, you should put stickers on it. If you like um, pictures of guns, you put pictures of guns in it and, and to be able to kind of mix and match it. But I feel like I would like to add some more layers to it, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Um, let's see. Was there any more questions? Okay. So let's see. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, collaborations and things that are coming up. One of the reasons I don't have a lot of time to invest in uh, looking up new programs like something better than Google Hangout is that I'm still doing a lot of collaborations with people, but we're trying to do them on a much bigger scale, a much more professional scale. And so the one that I'm the most I think you'll be the most excited about is the one that I'm doing with Empty Hammock. And he, for a living, is a video editor. And so when he did the the funny little spoof on Janello, I never know how to say his channel name, Juno, Janello. I love him. He's a redneck uh, YouTuber, and he is so funny. But Empty Hammock did a a kind of a oh what are they called? Kind of a montage of all his funniest videos and put them together. And he did the same thing with my channel and put together a, kind of a little taste from a lot of different videos and it turned out super super cute and he and I are working right now on a project that is for a huge huge channel as a little bit of a spoof on it and um, I'm really really excited to see how it turns out I think you guys will really like it and we'll see if we can do a series on it but I'm not going to spill the beans yet because it's it's a pretty big deal um, who else do we have? And then Go for Green Living. That's another really, really fun one that we're doing. And he has been approaching people in the homesteading community. And I think Doug and Stacy are, um, are going to be part of it. And it's going to be kind of a round robin, kind of like the frugal family meal collaboration that we did with Amanda from, oh goodness, Amanda, frugal, oh, darn it, now I've lost my brain, Amanda. Amanda, what is your channel name? Oh, not Freedom Makers. Wrong Amanda. Um, I'll have to put her in link too because now I'm having a, just a brainlessness moment. Um, she does a lot of homeschooling videos too. So we did that with Amanda and with Tangi. That was a frugal family uh, collaboration. So now we're going to do one with Go for Green Living. Um, and it will be more of a homesteading one, and it will be super, super cool. And I can't remember if he told me not to share the topic or not, so you'll just have to wait and see. That one comes out the middle of July, which is really nice because it gives us, um, yeah, you are in it. Okay, that's what I thought. Did he say that we can say what the topic is? Because I think people would be really fascinated by it. Um, I'm, I'm super, super excited about that. And um, I think they have like 20 people lined up now. So if Go For Green Living approaches any of you guys that have uh, have channels too, make sure to, to join that. I think I start it on the 14th of July. Is it the 14th or the 4th? Is it the Saturday after that? I think it's the 5th. Is it the 5th that we start it? Anyway. We will give you notification of that when we do it. Hey, there you are. I can share the topic. Okay, so there's Go for Green Living. So you guys should go su subscribe to him and ask him if you can be part of it. He's right there with the little dove and the and the fig, uh, not fig, olive leaf, olive branch. Okay, so it is homesteading, homesteaders versus preppers. And to kind of talk about who's better prepped, a homesteader or a prepper. 
and um, it's going to be a round robin thing where I get to ask um, I get to ask Go for Green Living two questions about what he thinks homesteader versus prepper, which is better. And then he tags somebody and they get to do it. And I'm super, super excited about it. Um, so that's that one. And then the last one that I kind of wanted to talk about was, again, Mike Gowan. So those of you who've been watching our channel and you've been like, I, I don't think there's a huge number of my viewers who really want to make a living homesteading or want to make a living YouTubing and that kind of thing. But if you follow Dave Ramsey, one of, one of Dave Ramsey's biggest principles is get a bigger shovel. When you do your debt snowball, you start paying off your debt with your smallest bills first. <clears throat> and then once that credit card or whatever that bill was is paid off, you move on to the next smallest one. And yet he says, if you don't have a big enough shovel, if you don't have enough income coming in, then you're just spinning your tires and you're going to be doing this debt thing for 20 more years and paying all this interest to people that you don't want to be. Darn it. Mohair. Um, and so to me, the reason that I started my YouTube channel was because I wanted to share what I was doing, but also I was desperate. We had... Um, we had just moved here and we had been, we had, we felt like we had been forced into a little bit of debt because we were in a home that did not have central heating. It had baseboards. And even if we'd had central heating, it would have been very expensive. It would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of $500 a month just for heating in the winter. And we found our wood burning stove, which is normally about a $6,000 stove. And we found it for $2,500 delivered with all of the gurus and attachments and everything. And so we looked at it and we didn't have the cash to pay for it. And we're like, well, we could spend $500 a winter on wood or, or we could be spending $500 a month on electrical heat. And we made the decision to put that stove on a credit card. And it was slavery. It really, really was. It was slavery. It was so hard. We were making $35,000 a year. We had paid all our vehicles off. We had done this before, but it took us so much time to get these things paid off when we bought them. Like we, we hadn't spent more than all, all our cars we owned outright and we, and, and we, they hadn't been expensive in the first place. They were not expensive vehicles, $2,000 for our, for our Lincoln. But um, it all kind of happened at the same time and we saw this credit card building up and building up. And my husband was stressed out. He, he felt like he was going to work all day for no reason. He felt like he was going and killing himself at work just so that we could pay these stupid bills for these things that we felt like we needed. But we weren't getting ahead. We couldn't go on vacations. We couldn't go out to eat. We couldn't, we couldn't even go visit family that lived a couple hours away because we couldn't afford the gas. And so I went and got a job babysitting. For a lady down the road she had three little kids but um, what ended up happening was that they were public schooled and and had been, were in daycare when I wasn't watching them and they kept coming home sick really really sick and John ended up he's a delivery guy and he ended up getting bronchitis and had it for the whole winter and it was really scary and we had bronchitis and it was really scary because the kids kept we we'd just get well and then the kids would come back with another uh, lung problem and then we ended up getting taxed on top of that, and we ended up paying like 40% tax because of, uh, because of the way that, that it worked out with that babysitting. And so um, we really felt like we couldn't get out of that trap. We had, we, we had very low, very, very low cost of living. We were paying our debt off, but we felt like every time we got out of debt, we had to get back into it for a repair or to you know, get hay for the winter or to get wood for the winter or whatever it was. And so what I did is I, I looked around and I'm like, you know, I see these people making these stupid videos about n things that don't matter. Things that are these stupid family vlogs that don't matter. They're not teaching anybody anything. And they're making all this money doing it. Why can't I take all this information that I know how to live frugally and I know how to farm? Why don't I start a channel and teach some people something that matters? I can teach them something that I'm passionate about and maybe I can make a living and maybe I can dig us out of this hole. 
And that's how it started was that we needed a bigger shovel and I wasn't willing to have that bigger shovel take me away from home because then I would be paying for daycare. My kids weren't old enough to be in school yet and even if they were, um, we felt we felt strongly about um, ha not having them in public school, but they weren't old enough yet anyway. And so I would have been making something in the neighborhood of $2 an hour in order to have somebody else raise my kids. And so that wasn't an option. And so the reason I talk about my Etsy store and the reason I talk about um, the YouTube channel as an income is because I've, I've been there. And the, the way that, so let, let, me, let me start back over, make sure I didn't miss anything. So for those of you who are homesteaders, because you want to be out of debt, that really feel like this debt slavery is not something you want to be part of, not everybody out there wants that. Not everybody wants to be a homesteader that, that is making money from it. I don't have a big enough property and I live in a climate where I cannot grow products at this point and sell them to people. I cannot do that. It would be, it would be very, very foolish for me to invest in things where I was trying to do market gardening or sell livestock on a large scale. I couldn't make money doing it. And so a lot of people come into homesteading thinking that they're going to sell pigs or something and, and make a money, but you have to pay for feed, you have to pay for shelter, and then you have to pay for time to take care of them, and it's a huge investment. Whereas, in my opinion, doing something that allows you to sell goods online that are either mental, educational type products or tools, such as what I sell like with my spinning wheels or with my homesteading journals, that allows you to work as hard as you possibly want and you're not limited by space. You're only limited by the amount of creativity that you have to be able to invest in the product. And I'm so frustrated with this mohair right now because it keeps breaking on me. This is not going to be a Navajo ply. This is going to be a garbage ply. Dang it. Um, and so that's the reason. Let me double check that I'm not running over time. Okay. And so that's the reason why I feel so passionately about sharing. Isn't that silly? But the thing is, is that with my Etsy store, because I have my YouTube channel, I have people that I want to share tools with. I don't want to like go do a screen print of on a, on a coffee mug very badly because I don't really feel like that's a tool. The reason why I like to sell the spinning wheels is because it's a tool that helps somebody else be independent. One of the things that I sell on my Etsy store is, is yarn and, and knitted goods and things like that. And so if somebody else wants to start an Etsy store and sell yarn, they can, what, what I sell is a tool. I, I believe strongly in, in, in the right tool for the right job. And um, that being said, let's see, I'm trying really hard not to get confused about which direction and things I've already covered. Things that I feel good about selling are tools. And things that I don't necessarily feel good about selling are things that are just branded to me. Um, that being said, I think some people have some amazing things that I I would buy. Like, uh, let's see, uh, Doug and Stacy, they sell their little their t-shirts that are the Homestead Homies. I think that is so stinking clever and and I love that. And for me, I I I don't understand the business of that very well, and so I don't know how I would make money doing it. What I'm good at is tools, and so that's what I sell. And Deep South at the Homestead, didn't they, guys, didn't you just start selling those solar ovens? Um, a squash flute and was out by the barn playing it. <laughs> I love it. I want to see that. So I, I feel like there is a way to keep your integrity and sell things to your audience because you care about them, because you care about your audience and you care about the tools that you're selling. Now, I, I, I think you have to be careful and make sure it is tools that you're actually that you actually care about. Um, and so, and so, and and let's see. Back to Mike Gowan again because he's the one that really got me onto this, is that I was trying so hard to make a living with the YouTube, and because I just really wanted to share information with people, but what it came down to was that there, I, it's a small market of people who care about this kind of thing, and we're, we're very frugal, 
And um, to sell to a frugal crowd, you have to have an amazing tool. Yeah, I, I don't think it's right to sell to a frugal crowd something that is purely um, commercial because I think you, you're you wanting to teach them how to be independent. And um, so I wish I could see more questions about this. And, and see, this is the thing where I know that not everybody out there cares about this, but I do know that there are people out there that feel desperate about their money situation. And so I believe that you can't do everything from one direction. You can't make it on just an Etsy store, I don't think, unless you have a super amazing product that nobody else sells and you have a way to let people know. I don't think you can just make it on a YouTube channel because your views fluctuate. Like in the summer, the Homestead uh, channels don't do as well because everybody's out working in their garden, which is just how it should be. And um, you can't make it just on your farm products. Like I do make money off of my farm like by selling my goats, but it's, it's enough to pay for hay. It's not enough to actually make money. And so I, I feel like everybody's bigger shovel, bigger debt shovel looks different. And because our skills are different and what we have to offer is different. Deep South Homestead was like, okay, I already saw that one. Okay, we got it. <laughs> I have a hard time figuring out which question was the last one. The biggest reason to be a homesteader is the food is much healthier and tastier better. You know, Grizz, I totally 100% agree. Um, for me, when we have been really hectic lately, and I have been buying supplies for the Etsy store, and we have had to eat somewhere that was fast food, I pay for it very, very quickly. And um, I, I, I'm gratified by that. I'm gratified that that the food that I could, that I can grow and cook at home is so evidently superior to the food that I can get out there, even even at a at a restaurant. We have a tendency that um, John and I have a favorite restaurant that once a year we would go to, and for for you know anniversary. I think I already said that, didn't I? And we would go there and we would look at it and we'd be like, so the duck in our freezer was a lot better than this, and um, and that's gratifying. And right now, everything is a little bit up in the air because as things start to pay off and as, as things start to work, like the Etsy store is totally working right now. It's amazing. It's been, it's, it's, it's been amazing, and it takes time to keep it maintained, which means that now I'm looking around to try and figure out, um, okay, so we have orders, and this is all great and good. Now how do I keep the farm going? And hence the, well, I guess I better get some drip lines for my greenhouse. But I'm so tired of investing money into the homestead right now. I just, I could spit. I, did, did any of you guys out there, like Deep South Homestead, um, where are you? Did he come on yet? Sand Hollow Homestead. Not spending money and reducing expenditures is called cost avoidance. There's only so much you can do, but it'll help, and I think you do it. Some folks find what others used and buy stuff and refurbish and sell. What can you refurbish and sell? You know, that is a really, really good point. And it's another source of income on our farm. What I end up doing is that people will give me free stuff, um, family and stuff like that, furniture, and I will put it up on Craigslist and I will sell it. And the person who gave it to me doesn't care. They gave it to me for free. They just didn't want it in their house. And a lot of the way that I make that money back is by teaching people how to use the tool that I was, that I'm selling them. And, um, and so, yeah, selling, selling things on things like Craigslist or Facebook and, and that kind of thing, I think they, they are, they are another very, very good income stream. For me right now, the reason I don't do a lot of refurbishing is that I can make more money doing a really good YouTube video that continues to pay me every month than to spend a lot of time on fixing something, um, which is why if somebody offers me something that's um, not, in a, not in really good quality, not in really good condition, I will sell it at a discounted price just to get it out of my house so that it's not taking up a lot of space. But with the refurbishing, I definitely do that with fabric. If I if I go to a garage sale and I see a box of ribbon and old fabric for ten cents, I buy it because I use it in my Etsy store. So for me, what works really well is to take old stuff and just turn it into new stuff. 
um, and sell it on Etsy. And um, but for somebody out there who has mad mechanic skills, I think that is an amazing idea. Um, any other questions? I want to make sure that I'm not bleeding over into Tommy's time. I think that's looking good. Okay. So, um, like, for instance, we are surrounded by a lot of people in our area that um, do small engine repair and that kind of thing. And, it's, it, and who else? We have a neighbor that does uh, concrete form work in the spring. Another guy has, has a big backhoe that he does a lot of ditch cleaning. There's opportunities out there, I think, that can allow us to build our bigger shovel. And um, to me, what, what I wish I had known when I first started and, and things, you know, looking, hindsight is twenty twenty. is that I wish when my kids were smaller, I hadn't been as worried about money. I think that at, at least as a mother, and I'm pretty sure it goes for dads too, is that those those money worries can make you snappy and impatient with your children faster than anything else. And that's something that I really kind of sorrow over that I, I feel like debt and financial hardship is really hard on kids because it, it's hard on parents. And even though when I, I wish that I had been finished with school when we got married and started having kids, I wish that we had had a more solid financial plan when we got married so that so that there would have been some money to do some splurgy things, so that there would have been money to go take my kids to go get ice cream and to not be so focused on every penny that came in and out of the house. Because I see that now when we have, before, before John got hurt, when money was, was doing pretty well because we had the YouTube channel and we had his income coming in. I noticed that the kids were happier because when it came to being able to buy a few more groceries that we, that we felt would benefit us uh, on top of what we already grew, it, it was like the kids felt like, like the stress was down. And to me, I think that's one of the biggest reasons to be out of debt is it's not necessarily so you can go take your kids on vacation, but just that your everyday life is not so scary. Will we be able to make these bills? Um, which is really weird because, again, John and I were never in a lot of debt. I think what it was is just that we never felt like we got far enough ahead that we could stop looking over our shoulders. And... Um, I have a lot less fear now that John was out of work for those six months because in the, in that time that we were out of debt, John was save, had money in envelopes and money in savings and had paid for the, the mortgage to the point where we weren't hurting. It was just that it was eating our savings up, him being out of work. And so now I don't really have that sense of fear anymore because I saw that because we didn't have debt, there were so many different avenues for us to take. One of the reasons we were going to sell the farm was, was not because we couldn't make the mortgage. It was because it was a choice of, did we want to continue to have this lifestyle where the farm ate so much money during certain times of the year? Did we, did we, we wanted to sit down and reassess our goals and say, is this really what we want? Do we really want to be farming or would we like to move on and do something else, move into a tiny house and have smaller bills is this what we still want? Do we still want to be homesteaders? And the fact that we didn't have debt allow, would have allowed us to do that. We could have sold our house and had quite a bit of money to go and, and find somewhere smaller with the tiny house and with some land. It would have been, it, it would have been a choice not a necessity. We, would, we wouldn't have lost the house. We just would have decided whether or not we still wanted homestead. And the reason why I guess it was important to you guys was that our channel would have changed. And so that was why there was the, the openness in that one video where I was saying, I, I don't know if the channel is going to change. I don't know if we're still going to be farming. It was, did we want the drain on our paycheck? 
And there still is that question. Honestly, deep down in my soul, I've always wanted to live in a tiny house. And the, the hardship for me would be to leave my plants. I have a very, very hard time leaving my dirt. I put so much work into it that if I could just, if I could, if I could poof, have this house not here anymore and instead have some tiny little shack to live in, I would, I would make that choice instantly. Um, which is funny because now my basement is full of sewing machine and serger and, and all my Etsy stuff. So my, my basement is actually full of my business now, but that's the idiosyncrasy is that when you get what you want, sometimes you have to reevaluate and make sure that it's really what you want. Um, and right now we're having to do that an awful lot. Everything's kind of having to change. We have woofers coming because I can't keep up with things anymore. And, um, we have the Etsy store that's bringing in income and the YouTube that's bringing in income. And now what do we really want? Do we need this income? Do we want to move on to something else that the bills aren't as big and kind of change our lifestyle a little, a little, a little bit and simplify? Um, it, it's all, but because we're debt free, it's all a possibility. It's all a possibility. And um, right now I, I don't want to say I'm watching for a sign from God because I really think that he listens to the prayers in our hearts and, and gives us what we really want. So I'm trying to be really careful in my prayers lately that, um, that I'm really looking at what I, what I think my family needs and not just making snap requests of God to fix things. Cause he's, he's, he's really given us what we need. We, we are, are doing well and now it's just a little bit complicated. Um, anyway, do you guys have any more questions? I think we're just about done. Um, make sure to go check out Tommy's channel, which is um, the Off Grid. Is it the Off Grid Nation? It's Off Grid Nation. Tommy, when you changed the name from Carolina Prepper, you really screwed me up. You want to get out of the city, Mike Miller. You know, I hear you. Um, I I I have to say that if I could make any step back, it would be. I don't know. Bloom where you're planted. If it's if it's where you can afford to be, maybe bloom where you're planted and and learn your skills while you're small. And that way, when you get to your bigger place, you're not spreading out so wide that that you can't manage it anymore. Because that's definitely where we are right now. Anyway, I love you guys, and um, please go check out Tommy. He has a really great channel about preparedness and about. Um, I've got a phone that keeps trying to ring um, about preparedness and patriotism. And I'm sure there will be interesting things to talk about today. What with the shooting that went on, which was very sad. And um, so Tommy at the off grid nation. And then before me, there was Brad from the big family homestead. And I think he's actually doing something with the permies on the, um, uh, some kind of big uh, collaboration between a lot of homestead permaculture people some good talks and I can't remember what it's called um, but go check out Permies and I think you'll see him on there in, in younger years because I think it's called Rockstar to Homesteader I think is what it's called anyway uh, make sure to go check everybody else out I don't know if we're going further along in the progression I know they were trying to add some other people on but um, make sure to leave comments and remember if you're one of my patrons from Patreon Make sure to add me on G Plus so that I can send you those um, those group hangout uh, links so that when we have our group hangout, you can join it. And we'll talk to you later. <laughs>